Mark Stein joins us, author, yeah. journalist, fills yeah. in for Rush Limbaugh. Yeah. And, and that is great grass. That's better than center court at Wimbledon. It's how I don't, I don't like to walk across the AstroTurf when it comes to I saw you checking it before. Yeah, yeah, I no, saw you out there. Beautiful, beautifully manicured. Right. Beautifully manicured. <laughs> so we've been covering uh, Hillary Clinton going off the rails and blaming yeah. everyone but herself. Uh. Uh, we, we've, got a, we've got a montage of things she said yesterday. Take a listen. My email account was uh, turned into, you know, the biggest scandal since Lord knows when. This was the biggest nothing burger ever. It was a mistake. I've said it was a mistake. But the way that it was used uh, was very damaging. I know you had Dean Bacay here from the New York Times uh, yesterday, and they covered it like it was Pearl Harbor. It was always a hard issue to put to bed, mm -hmm. but we put it to bed in July, and then it rose up again. I inherit nothing from the Democratic Party. It was bankrupt. It was on the verge of insolvency. Its data was mediocre to poor, non-existent, wrong. I had to inject money into it. This is the DNC. The, the DNC to keep it going. He really understands how to inflame people, how to uh, motivate them, how to bond with them over whatever their grievance is. You know, whatever resentment or point of anger that you may have, if he can get into it, whether it's race or sex or xenophobia or anti-Islamophobia, whatever it is. Mark, where do we start on this? Uh, well, my favorite bit was when she blamed the uh, crack Macedonian operatives mm -hmm. who were, uh, uh, apparently it makes more sense to spend uh, 200 bucks on crack Macedonian operatives than to spend a billion dollars on John Podesta and all the rest of it. Uh, apart from the Macedonophobia, I thought it was uh, pathetic. The rap on Trump as he was campaigning, we were talking about it beforehand, was that he, he just stumbled around, he didn't know what he was doing. No now, now we're told that apparently it was all this crack data mining operation that Trump had that said, you know, there's a, there's a swing county in Ohio that's really just itching for a terrific John McCain joke right now. And, uh, <laughs> and, and the idea that this is... <laughs> the, the, the guy who won by basically tearing up the rule book, they I can't believe it. Do you and realize as she went through everything, she was going yeah. through the deplorable list? Right. Remember right. the big mistake she made? Yeah. She was doing it again. She says, he touches the underbelly of right. America. She believes it. Well, she's also insulting those people that, again. Yeah, I know. And the idea is it can't be a genuine connection because these rubes are, are, are too stupid. It ha they have to have been suckered into falling for Trump. The, f the fact is, uh, it's not even a Democrat-Republican thing. You could see when, uh, last time round, that... Obama, whatever what you felt about him, uh, connected with the people he spoke with in a way that Mitt Romney, it didn't come naturally to him. Absolutely not. This, this time around, Hillary, Hillary didn't connect. People left a Hillary rally, which is an oxymoronic <laughs> term, uh, more depressed than when they went in. The thing that I, I walked away from her blaming the DNC, because she, of course she's going to blame yeah. other people. Her, she says her server, that's a nothing right. burger. I didn't win because right. of the Trump people and the deplorables, the right. underbelly. But then she said the DNC was bankrupt. And right. thanks to me, the yeah. DNC exists because I was funding yeah. it. I was injecting money. Does this hurt the dumbs? Uh, well, it hurts them insofar as the only reason, the, the idea that uh, some Saudi prince gives Bill Clinton $2 million for a speech on diarrhea in Africa so that uh, Hillary can then give the $2 million to prop up the DNC. At the time, we were told that the DNC had the great ground game, the great data over mining, and, over again. Yes. and uh, Trump had no ground game. He was just winging it, mm -hmm. and uh, again, it's the complete opposite of everything they said at the time. And did she really believe that the servers are nothing burger? Did she really say, this is just me using... She, she did. Well, by the way, Kafifi is Russian for nothing burger. <laughs> right. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's what uh, Trump's it's giving the game code. away there. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, Les, I just want to bring this up. She also when asked, why did you give those speeches to Goldman Sachs? Right. She goes, why? Oh, they were asked, 
A man can do it, but a woman can't? What is that? Really? It's no, sexist no, no, now? What no, are you talking no, about? No. Again, it's, the, it's this disconnect. She was a terrible candidate. There's places where uh, the, 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 the wife of the previous guy runs for president, and they're banana republics. I've got nothing against women leaders. I'm not a sexist. Canada's had a woman prime minister. Britain's had two. Australia's had one. New Zealand's had one. Germany, Scandinavia, all the rest of them. The difference is they, they were weren't entitlement candidates who felt they were entitled mm. to be uh, the uh, head of government. There's a big difference. So, well, today at 3 o'clock in the Rose Garden, the President of the United States is going to give us his uh, decision on whether we stay in this parent climate agreement with uh, almost 200 other nations. Yeah. What do you think he's going to do? Uh, I would love it if he were to pull out, because to me this sums up the absolute decadence of uh, the political class. You know, if you're blown up at an Ariana, Ariana Grande concert, uh, the uh, mayor of London and the prime minister of France say, get used to it, that's just the way it is. We can't do anything about it. But if you want us to lower the thermostat of the planet by a third of a degree in the year 2100, that we can do. Spending it's, trillions. Yeah, spending trillions to do it. It's bonkers. Uh, fix the Ariana Grande problem. You should be able to do that, and if that works out, then adjust the planet. Is that the perfect the dichotomy of the future, that mm. you've got the left calling conservatives climate deniers, but conservatives right. pointing and saying, well, of course, you're Islamist deniers. Right, right. And, and in 2100, I, I think in in 2100, we'll know who was right. The, those of us who worried uh, about what's happening at things like the Ariana Grande thing, uh, or those who worried about the, right. the, the planet will be fine. It'll shrug off your SUV and your air conditioner without a thought, as it has for thousands of years. But we have seen what China is. Mm. That is a ton that's country that has ignored all yeah. type of uh, yeah. pollution regulations or common sense. We don't want that, but we're not there. Now, people on the flip side will say, listen, if the U.S. stays in, Hmm. They'll be able to make sure people don't go off the, uh, off the ledge with severe economic principles. Listen, listen to this, and we'll get your reaction. It would send to the rest of the world a message that the United States does not care about this planet that we all share. This is no longer, oh, he's doing his thing. This is, this is endangering the world. If we stand alone to face this global crisis, it's more than reckless. I mean, we are really endangering the planet, the American people, and our economy at a really fragile stage. We're fragile. It's, it's a ridiculous, it's not a serious agreement, and, and neither was Kyoto, and as far as I'm aware, the only country that actually took Kyoto seriously uh, was New Zealand, and they tried to honor it, and it nearly bankrupted them, so they had to pull out. All the other people just went along as a joke, and the joke gesture politics is what Trump uh, ran against. Trump is supposed to be the guy who stands up against these pathetic joke uh, international gesture is, attitude. Is there a politics. big risk if he, if he does stay in it? Is there a political risk for him if he does stay in it after he ran against it? I, th I think there is, because this mm -hmm. isn't even a tough call. It's a meaningless agreement. It's a yeah. poser agreement. It's actually one of the worst things about uh, what you might call the European unionization of the world, where, where, where leaders just strike attitudes and stand <laughs> there looking pleased with themselves. You know, well, that's what it is. That's so, the full well, well, uh right there. That's the full <laughs> nothing burger. <isn't> right? <laughs> sure. Step, stepping back, why is climate change the religion of the left? I think precisely because it is so meaningless. Because if you say to if you say to them, oh, can, let's enforce the border. What are you out of your mind? We can't. That's just the that's just a natural phenomenon. We couldn't have enforced the border. People are going to be coming in anyway. But if you say to them, well, we can control the very heavens. You know that we can do, and it's and it's and it's in, it's actually literally insane. The less it has to do with your life, the more the left is invested in it, and the more spending it yeah, requires. Yeah, and control. Thank you, Thank you so Mark. much. Appreciate Mark. it. Thanks, Mark. Uh, good job, Mark.